from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2018. It's theCUBE's three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this day, Alan Cohen, who's an industry legend, um, retired now, doing a lot of boards as our guest analyst here for this segment. Our next two guests. I, I another word for unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender in Silicon Board Valley is basically on boards. <laughs> our next two guests, Bruce Shaw, Senior Director of Global Lines and Industry Solutions, remaking what it means to partner in the cloud. And of course, Keith Norby, CUBE alumni, manager of BizDev, that's the BizDev for NetApp. Guys, thanks for coming on. Thanks for spending the time. Oh, thanks for having us. So the first thing I want to get to is, um, give us an update on the relationship with NetApp and VMware. Obviously, Pat Gelsinger, Spring in his step, go back three years ago, he almost, like his job was on the line. So much has happened, the relationship with Amazon, the clarity around cloud, cloud operations, the role of infrastructure in that, with DevOps driving programmable infrastructure. Right. Kind of the world spinning into NetApp's front door right now. Yeah, yeah, we feel pretty good about it. Keith, I'll, I'll, he runs that relationship, yeah. so I'll let him lead the answer. Well, I thought, I thought it was best said, and we could kind of unite together VMware and NetApp on uh, moving from data centers to centers of data. Uh, NetApp's been on this uh, you know, data visionary and, and, and sort of the data authority track for a couple years now. You guys have known that you've been to uh, NetApp Insight. Uh, the relationship really is complementary from that perspective and it goes back many years, you know, more than a decade. If you look at our common base, you know, VMware of course has you know, 500,000 you know, users in its install base, we've got a couple hundred thousand. It's a, so it's a gigantic opportunity together to move people exactly in the acts that, that, that Pat talked about in the keynote, you know, act one through act four, and getting us all to multi-cloud. And, and when you look at the relationship and the base of the ONTAP uh, products that we have with VMware and the architecture, all the way to cloud volumes, and then the latest uh, architecture that we've just done with uh, VMware uh, for NetApp HCI, there's a lot to talk about. You know, I've been covering NetApp uh, since the queue of nine years, which is our ninth VMworld, but I've been following the company since the nine, late 90s when they went public. Uh, always a culture of learning and adaptability, but you know, to survive in the past 10 years specifically, it's really been about adaptation because if you look at that model, people were, a lot of losers are dead bankrupt, see companies come and go, but the ones that are customer centric seem to win. Jassy on stage, very customer centric. Yep. VMware, listening to their customers, got a great community. You guys have a very loyal customer base, both on the customer side, going back to the original products yeah. and the partners. Right. So Bruce, as you think about partnering in the cloud era, when you're now looking at all kinds of different relationships, whether it's in the stack from a technology standpoint, or go to market, or whatever the machination of the relationship is, you got to think differently. So I got to ask you the question, how do you partner? Because it's not just about the profit anymore, it's about oh, no. what is value add in this era? Take a minute to explain the vision. Yeah, it, and it's, you hit it right on the head. The, the, the value question is no longer the primary driver of what you're going after. When I say value, just pure revenue stream. You want to look at, obviously, you know, the evolution to an ecosystem. And we spent a lot of time with that. Uh, on the internal side, not that anybody cares about what we do under the covers, we restructured our business units from one single business unit into three. So we've got a, a, a cloud-focused you know, CDS, which is cloud, focuses on the hyperscalers and our cloud volumes business. CIBU, which is our conversion, hyper-conversion infrastructures, and then of course, the, the guys that handle on tap and the, you know, the big stuff on the back end that provides uh, the building blocks to all of that. That gives They're us- They're dedicated teams, right? Dedicated teams, dedicated business units. And that gives us the potential of three pathways in terms of which we partner. And my goal since I, I came in to run the group in January has been how do we transition from a traditional alliances organization to evolve to one where we're much more fo focused on production of solutions, designing with our partners solutions that meet in the market. We're a very channel focused company. Um, we obviously, you know, you look at the success that NetApp's had over the 10 years with Cisco and FlexPod, that's a meet in the market model focused on validation to provide solutions for customers for industry problems. And trying to replicate that through key strategic partners that hit the ecosystem to do it. And, and that's been a very effective approach for us. And we spent a lot of time kind of recrafting the organization to match up both with our, our BUs and then our delivery through what we call pathways. And that pathway begins from everything from the, the channels to the GSIs. We have a now a new G100 
account group, and then to our own sales force, of course. All right, so what's in it for me as the customer, okay? I'm like, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, you're reorganized, sounds yep. good. Focus teams, highly cohesive, right. good segmentation, dedicated teams, what's the impact for the customer? The, the impact for you guys is easier to implement, lower cost, quicker delivery, and the assurance that you actually have a validated architecture that's using best of breed components for what you want, as opposed to, I have bought a monolithic stack of something and I'm locked in, right. and maybe it's you know, the A piece of this and the B of that. You can actually choose your Lego bricks to put together and we'll stand behind yeah. it with the validation that this works. Or maybe to just kind of uh, pull that a layer back on that. So obviously today we have Andy Jassy on stage with VMware a year later, right? People right. were extremely cynical a year ago when that <laughs> announcement went down there. Yeah. Here they are, they're throwing up their hands. Yeah. Right. Actually today- Capitulation was a term. Yeah, right, it's <laughs> uh, capitulation now. But, you know, if you are you know, now partnering and, and you're building alliances yeah. in the cloud era, right. three or four years ago, people were saying, the cloud, they're the enemy. We can't do right. business with that. That's what they said to their customers, you know, their partnerships. How has that changed and how do you think about partnerships with the cloud providers today? Three, three years ago, uh, the, the smart people out there said the cloud is going to kill Net, NetApp. Right. Right? <laughs> we, we're an on-premise, standalone storage company. Uh, the cloud is, the, it's the end. Well, fast forward to now, the cloud is our best friend. It's our biggest growing era, area. You look at the business we do with the hyperscalers under, under Anthony Lai, and that's the fastest growing piece of the business we got. We've made it very easy through ONTAP to work in either a cloud-only relationship or a hybrid where you're moving things from on-prem to off-prem and vice versa. And that's become a main focus of our business. And from an alliances standpoint, of course, once you have it in our own key ingredient, then it's what are the partners that we partner with to bring them into that to make it a more cohesive and, solution. Right. And right. then Senator, if I might have a second question. Of course. So, um, if I am a customer and on one side, you know, you have your alliance with VMware and the other side I have my growing initiatives right. with um, AWS or, um, right. or Google Cloud, it doesn't matter. Where does NetApp fit? between those two environments, right? Because you have alliances with both sides. Yeah. Sure. Right, so how does, like, so how do, what do I, what do I count on NetApp for? Because I'm, I'm looking multi-cloud, I'm looking at migration. Yep. How do I think about you in that? <clears throat> I, you know, to me, I think it's pretty clear. It's, all of it needs data to run. Uh, just like you need, you know, software head needs hardware to run on. Right. Even though it's in cloud, it's rendered. It is all about the, uh, the transition of being very hardware defined, to being software defined, to being, really function defined, and once you start to you know, modernize an architecture that way, or a, a general organization that's trying to deliver IT services, it's the delivery of those things that start to define where you have to take things that are both on-prem and in the cloud. So the entire thing around multi-cloud sort of requires that you have strategies for things that are in current data centers that just have to become more cloud-like in their functions and their functionality. Delivering it as a service is, is not just the mantra, but it's, it's the time to value and it's the consumption style. So as an example, like as we're trying to do things on-prem with our NetApp HCI solution, you know, doing embedded OEM with VMware isn't because we want to sell VMware licenses, it's because we want to make it as fast as possible and as easy for a customer to be able to turn it on and start using it similar to your experience buying a new iPhone. You know, we want to have you be able to add software to it like NSX, like vRealize or a full VMware private cloud stack in something that you know, hopefully will take minutes rather than hours, weeks, or, or months. Because we want that time to value, that consumption experience to be the king. And that extends the data protection, that extends the security. We're, we're not just a, a, a storage company, we're a data company that's really in the game for the full stack. And the advantage we have is that we're in all the hyperscalers, right. you know, and I think we can help VMware there. And, it was only one. And the piece I'd add, I think that's, that's different than before, is you know, most companies think about alliances as us plus them. Right. And in the cloud environment, it's us plus, 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 plus to get a solution and having a yeah. much different approach where it's, okay, we're going to have to be multi-partnered in a cloud environment to go get this done. And that also requires yeah. a, different, so, a different alliance motion. Less, and tennis, we, less tennis, more <laughs> soccer. Yeah, exactly. And when you look Great analogy. And when you look at it. Of course. When you, when you sure, look at so it, you know, this, it's all open source, it's cube. This show, this show demonstrates 
how uh, a, an ecosystem has really uh, extracted the maximum value out of the partners because there's a ton of this extension to the partner, the channel partner, the pathway yeah. partner, to really go and do, more so than VMware having to do it all themselves or NetApp having to do it all themselves. It is about that three-way partnership between the product, the solution, right. and, the, and, the, and the delivery partner itself. And you know, what did AWS even say to them? They, they said in the partner keynote yesterday that what they want out of the partners is capabilities. And isn't that, isn't that awesome? We want competencies and, and capabilities to understand who can deliver these, these certain capabilities, security, networking, storage, app refactoring, you know, you can go down the list. So I want to ask you guys why I got you both here, Pat Gelsinger and me, I want to get your reaction to something Pat Gelsinger said. Sure. He said two things I want to get your comments on. One was, he made a comment that said, no one should ever have to pay for DR ever again, CapEx. And two, he made a comment about how AI is 30 years old and hello AI, good to see you. Welcome to the introduction of AI, 30 years later. I think he said later. it's an overnight 30 year or, success. Yeah, overnight 30 year success, right. yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so one, DR, never pay for DR, CapEx. And then hello AI. So again, that kind of signals kind of what's going on. You got the right. service model, and then you got AI, an enabler, and one is a change over transforming. Your thoughts on the reaction to that, those two comments. I, I think the, the DR statement, while bold, might not be the solution for everybody. <laughs> I think there's certain folks that would say, based on their requirements, they have to have a yeah. traditional DR regardless, whether it's compliance or whatever else. But certainly, as you look at how the cloud infrastructure is targeted, there's a lot of cost savings to be gleaned from that, and we are absolutely investing in how we take the services we offer and make them much more readily available as a consumption model, as you go, as you consume, as opposed to a traditional So a little bit over diversion. the top, but kind of directionally right. correct yeah, in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We're going to go away, it's kind of like storage, it never went away. Right? Well, I, I, you know, certainly I think it will continue to decline and decline and decline, but I also, you know, just to declare it over, people still buy desktops, right? I mean, you yeah. know. That was declared dead in 97. Dave so, and I were just talking about infrastructure. You know, it was supposed to be dead 10 years ago. Right. Well, you know. and, and I think it's, you know, Pat's always said he's been a fan of NetApp, so I don't want to project <laughs> words into his mouth, but I think he's been there for us and the majority of the NetApp and, and VMware interactions at the VMware. a picture of Pat so, wearing a NetApp jersey at a Cube event. That, that, yes, that was, a, that was a big uh, moment for us, obviously. All right, so the AI piece, too. So, yo, your, any thoughts on that, that comment or the AI comment? I'll defer the AI to him, but I would just say that on the, on the DR thing is that we already have that in cloud volumes and a lot of the data services we're doing in AWS in the public right. cloud. So I think we, 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 we present a clear example of that. Right. AI. AI, um, Pat's exactly right. Something that's been around forever that's really getting a lot of uh, uh, airtime right now, but he's, he's precisely right. I mean, we see the growth of AI applications and usage is absolutely huge. And when you combine that with the types of instruments that are collecting data, right? What's wired today versus what wasn't two, right. three, five years ago. Obviously, the storage company, there's just an exponential amount of data growth that's being captured out there based upon these AI type machines that are only getting faster and smarter. So for us, we're, we're, we're welcoming the 30 year success. It's great that it's here to the party. As we look at that ecosystem, that's where we're heavily investing in expanding our partnerships and our routes to market because we're also focused right. on and, that. Ma and maybe just to follow on that. So <clears throat> the traditional conversation people have about cloud is right. somebody else's data center. It's somebody else's, right. Right, but now the cloud discussion is about you know, we were just talking about AI, self-driving cars, edge clouds, right. right? So the nature of where all this data reside is becoming much more dynamic and much right. more distributed. And much, that, that's, that's the point. It's right, so much more So how does that fit into where you guys are going? We think it's great. It, it fits perfectly with our business model of being able to move your data around in a multi-cloud environment and have it where you need it to be, whether it's on the edge, even further out, kind of the fog of the cloud, or all the way at the center where you want it to be. So. We think it fits the model that we have from you know, data everywhere, the data fabric. That's really what we've been designing for years and pushing to. This is the realization of that strategy in our minds is that's what we're arriving at. Yeah. Uh, partner program, quick update as we wrap up. What's the update on any kind of tiering? You guys have a strategy. You obviously got more partners engaged. Sounds like cloud gives more touch points. Give a we, quick uh, overview of what's going do. on. We uh, do. Jeff McCullough is our channel chief. He's done a great job coming in and absolutely driving that program more aggressively out into the field in North America. We've got a bunch of stuff that I don't want to steal his thunder coming up at Insight, <laughs> but uh, we, you know, no, it's okay. we're <laughs> not sure what I can steal at the moment. Um, we are aggressively investing in the channel program. We have been and will continue to be 
a channel driven company. I mean, even myself as the alliances head, we look at it always, and, and Keith mentioned it, that third piece of the three in the box is always, who's the delivery partner and how can we help them? And obviously the underlying tenet of that always is, let's make it meaningful. And let's be honest, meaningful to a partner is, they make money, they have services that they can they can absolutely embrace and deliver. And what's next for the relationship with AWS and what other top partners you have? You mentioned NVIDIA before we came on camera. What's next for VMware and some of your top name partners? We've got some big announcements coming up with VMware. Yeah, if well, you want to tease one of them or... Well, you know, the, the, the reality in the world is that, you know, if you, if you want to buy solutions for VMware, a VMware validated design is kind of the pathway to really getting uh, the mark of validation. And so we're on that path as well. We're looking to get that down the road. Uh, we've got some early tracks to it. We, we announced the first leg of that at this show called the Net Valid Verified Architecture for VMware Private Cloud. Uh, that gives us the first proof points that we're running the entire stack on NetApp HCI. We're going to use this as a way, along with ONTAP over time, you know, to be able to have on-prem solutions as well as cloud volumes with, the, with you know, futures, they, they, they showcased it yesterday with uh, some future previews of VMC with, with cloud volumes. So look for that to come in, 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 the, in the future time frame. Um, on tap AI. On tap AI we, is, we just, is a gigantic. Back to your AI feature. question, we just announced a, a joint meet in the market solution with NVIDIA, a converged architecture where it's NetApp storage, uh, NVIDIA's um, uh, DGX uh, CPU servers. We've got some uh, switching in there from Cisco and you've got a very solid converged infrastructure that goes specifically and targets the AI market. And AI, they're a pretty strategic partner. You guys, NVIDIA? They are. I mean, they've been hot lately. I mean, talk they about are, AI. Yeah. There's a lot of guys smiling in that booth yeah. over there. <laughs> they look pretty happy. You can't make NVIDIA enough crowd. GPUs for all those blockchain and, uh, miners. And I think, I think the, key, the, 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 the key factor for the new alliance model is that the context shifts depending upon the market you're trying to right. reach. So if it's the AI market, typically NVIDIA is going to lead that conversation. Right. If you flip it to the EUC market, and you look at GPU acceleration for VDI, right. They're an ecosystem to VMware driving the horizon right. package. So it's a very interesting context that you have to be very uh, savvy on to understand how the technologies fit together in a way that the solution partners already today are putting them together for customers. And, and that AWS and all the hyperscalers know natively. That well you guys services. get a lot of good props. Congratulations on your success. Notable hallway conversations certainly here and, and out in the field. I talked to customers, you guys are uh, with the solid state drives and the software investment you made. Yeah, like it's paying off, so Flash, congratulations. Flash has been huge for us, yeah, so we're. Yes. And good luck with the, with the new new reorganization. Thank Bruce, you. Great Keith, to see Solidfire kind of come through the All right, All right. we're here Great on theCUBE. Be right back. Show. Stay with us more live coverage after this short break. I'm John Furrier, Alan Cole. We'll be right back. Stay with us.